Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Hey guys, and welcome back to the Language Tutor Spanish series. I'm Danny Evans, your profesor de español. So, early on in the Spanish series, I did a lesson on indirect object pronouns. And you know, ever since I did that lesson, I've gotten so many messages from you, the viewers, asking for more clarification on that. And you have so many questions, and I've gotten a lot of requests for a follow-up video on that. So, this is your episode. We're doing this for you, the viewers. And so I did part one, so now I'm going to go over to one of our language tutor team members, Robin, for part two. Let's go to Robin. Hola amigos! Hi friends! I'm Robin Bates and Danny's invited me over here to the Spanish side of the channel to help out a little bit with some direct object and indirect object pronoun clarification. So Dr. Evans has taught you about the direct object pronouns. He did that in Lesson 26. And let's just review real quick, okay? Over here's the chart, and it's me, te, la or lo for the third person, and nos, os, la or los for the plural third person, okay? Now remember that a direct object pronoun shows who is receiving the direct action. In other words, if you can ask the what is being thrown, what is written, what is given, that's going to be your direct object. And then your pronoun is simply a word you use to replace it, okay? So with the direct object pronouns, you're going to use these words to replace the direct object in the sentence. Now, you have to agree with the noun or pronoun that you're replacing. In other words, if you are replacing a female noun, you have to use a female pronoun, la or las. If you're replacing a male noun, you have to use a male pronoun, lo or los, okay? So just keep that in mind as we do this. Also remember that your uh, direct object pronouns have to come directly before your verb. Okay, so let's say an example. Ella compró un casco. She bought a helmet. Well, when we use the direct object pronoun for un casco, a helmet, we're going to use the masculine one and we're going to put it right before the verb. Ella lo compró. Okay, let's do another sentence. ¿Quién necesita guantes? Who needs some gloves? Nosotros los necesitamos. Well, we need them, so we're going to use the plural masculine pronoun, los, okay? Let's do a couple more. ¿Dónde está la pizza que pedí? What happened to the pizza I ordered? Tu hermana se la comió. Well, your sister already ate it. Too late. You got to be faster than that. ¿Invitaste a tus amigas a tu cumpleaños? Did you invite your friends to your birthday? Notice tus amigas, that's a group of females. So we're going to have to use the feminine pronoun, las. Si, las invité. All right, so that's just a review of Lesson 26, direct object pronouns. All right, so Lesson 27, the very next lesson, Dr. Evans taught you about indirect object pronouns. These are pronouns that can answer the question to whom or for whom, or it can tell you the direction that the object is going in. Okay? Now, there is no gender difference with indirect object pronouns. We don't have lo, la, los, las. We simply have le and les. Okay? So you only have to worry about it being singular or plural. Indirect object pronouns tend to be used with another phrase just to clarify to whom they're referring. So let's say, let's look at this example. El profesor le habla. Well, who's he talking to? We would have, we have the indirect object pronoun, le, but who is le? El profesor le habla al alumno. So normally you need to clarify a little who you're referring to with this indirect object pronoun, unless you have already referenced it earlier in the sentence or in the conversation, and that it just flows and it makes sense who this is referring to, okay? Um, if we did a plural one, it would be, el profesor les habla. A los alumnos. Notice, a los alumnos became plural. Les habla now becomes plural as well. Okay? El profesor is speaking. That's the action. Who is he speaking to? Los alumnos. Okay? So that's your indirect. Uh, let's do one last example. Yo le explico los pronombres a usted. All right. Who's doing the action? I am. Yo. What am I doing? Explico. Yo explico. I explain. 
What am I explaining? Los pronombres. That is my direct object. That's what is being explained. But to whom am I explaining it? A usted. That's my indirect object. Okay? So, yo le explico. That's the indirect object pronoun. Los pronombres a usted. All right? If I had already used a usted in a previous sentence or if I had made it clear who I was speaking to, I would just leave that off. Let's say somebody says, um, who can explain these to me? ¿Quién me puede explicar los pronombres? I would say, yo se los explico. I can. Okay? Another thing to remember is that the indirect object pronoun is going to go in front of a conjugated verb or of a negative statement if you're trying to answer a question saying no. So, for example, you're going to have, yo le digo. No te lo comas. No, don't eat that. No te lo comas. Okay? It goes in front of the verb. But if you have an infinitive, remember these are verbs that have not been changed. They still end in AR, ER, or IR. If you're using the gerund, these are the ING verbs in English. In Spanish, they're going to end in ANDO or IENDO. Ando, yendo. Or if you're giving a command, like sit, then you would use it after the verb. Okay? For example, va a darle el libro a su amigo. He is going to give it to his friend. Dar is still an infinitive. It still has the AR on it. So we're going to add le behind it. And in this case, we're going to attach it and it becomes one word. Va a darle el libro a su amigo. Let's say we're doing a command. Like you're visiting your grandmother and she made your favorite food. And she's saying, eat, eat up, eat up, as grandmothers tend to do. She would say, cometelo. Es tu postre favorito. Cometelo. In this case, we've got one word. It's got a direct object pronoun, an indirect object pronoun, and the verb. All thrown together. And it tells us who's doing the action, who's receiving the action, and what is being received. Okay? So that's kind of a neat little way you can use these together. Okay, here's another interesting rule about the indirect object pronouns. If you are giving something or you are speaking about doing something with a third person, Okay, so you are giving it to him. I gave my documents to the policeman. She turned in her work to the teacher. Okay, it's a third person that is receiving the action. You have to use the indirect object pronoun le before it. Okay, this is just one of those strange little rules of Spanish, but you have to do it. So, for example, a correct sentence is le entregué la composición al profesor. Composición is another way of saying a composition, an essay. Le entregué la composición al profesor. I turned my work in to the professor. You cannot say, entregué la composición al profesor. This is one of those that's automatically going to flag you as not being a native speaker because people are going to go, mm, that just doesn't sound right. Okay? Now, if you are using the name of the person, you do not use the indirect object pronoun. So if you are saying, entregué la composición al señor Durán, that's correct. But it has to be the proper name of the person. If not, you need to have the indirect object pronoun at the beginning of that sentence, okay? In lesson 76, Dr. Evans also taught you about using the direct object pronoun and the indirect object pronoun, both for the third person together in a sentence, okay? If you have an object that is going to be third person, whether it's it, it's a he, it's a she, okay? And you're using lo, la, los, or las. In that same sentence, you cannot use le or les as the indirect object pronoun, okay? So let's use the example of somebody is giving a gift to a person, okay? Le darán el regalo a Lucía. Okay, the verb is darán. Will they give? What are they giving? El regalo. So, el regalo is masculine. We're going to use the direct object pronoun, lo. But who are they giving it to? To whom? It would be Lucia. Well, Lucia is third person. We would use le. But we cannot say, 
Le lo darán. No, that does not work. In these situations, you have to take the indirect object pronoun, the person that is receiving the action, to whom, for whom, and change it to se. Se lo darán. Se referring to Lucia, lo referring to the gift. Okay? Let's look at another example. Les venderán los libros a los turistas. All right, so what is the verb? Venderán, to sell. What is being sold? Los libros. That's our direct object pronoun. So we're going to use the word los. But who are they being sold to? The tourists. Okay? So we would normally use the word les because it's third plural. But we cannot do this because we already have a direct object pronoun that we're using. So you have to change les to se. Se los venderán. Will they sell them to the tourist? Okay. Last example. Voy a comprarles unos regalos a los niños. Okay, who is doing the action? Voy a. That's yo. Yo voy a. What am I doing? Comprar. Comprar what? What am I buying? Unos regalos. Some gifts. Who am I buying these gifts for? Los niños. I'm going to buy them for the children. Okay? Now remember, we've got the a personal in here. A los niños. Okay? So if I use los for unos regalos and les for the niños, we can't do that. That's Those two together don't work. We have to change les for the niños to se. Okay? So we wind up with voy a comprárselos. All right, this is bringing in some stuff that we talked about just a few minutes ago. Look at comprar. It's still in the infinitive. It has the AR to left on it still. Why? Because we already have a conjugated verb. Voy a has already been conjugated. So we leave comprar alone, and then we add the two pronouns to the end of it. Voy a comprar se los. Okay? In lesson 89, Dr. Evans was teaching about the verb faltar. And several of you have asked a specific question about one of the examples. A la sopa le falta sal y pimienta. In this case, the word falta, faltar is being used as a verb, meaning it's missing something. It is lacking something. As in the soup needs more salt and pepper. It's not seasoned enough. Well, what's the verb in this sentence? Falta, missing. What is missing? Sal y pimienta, salt and pepper is what's missing. But whom is missing the salt and pepper? In this case, what is missing the salt and pepper? The soup is missing it, okay? So we're going to use the indirect object pronoun for the soup. That is what is missing it. That is the one that is lacking the salt and pepper. So we're going to use an indirect object pronoun even though we're still restating the noun. Remember earlier I told you that sometimes you have to state the noun just because it gives it the context? Because if not, I could say it's missing salt and pepper. Well, what's missing salt and pepper? Is it the soup? Is it the meat? Is it my mother lost her salt and pepper shaker? Who's missing the salt and pepper? In this case, it's la sopa. And although we use the indirect object pronoun, a la sopa le falta, you still need to state that it's the soup. And then you state what is missing, okay? Well, this has just been a brief overview of some of the finer details of using direct object pronouns and indirect object pronouns. Hopefully, it helped clear some things up. If not, please leave us a comment, ask your questions, and we will do our best to answer them. See you later, guys. Bye. Friends, thanks for watching The Language Tutor. If you have a question for me, feel free to leave it in the comment section below the video. And please click subscribe and the notification bell so that you'll never miss any of our language lessons.